Hello guys, in today's video I'll be reading Dragon Masters Rise of the, Earth, Rise of the Earth Dragon by Tracy West and illustrated by Graham Howells. Chapter 1 To the Castle Drake didn't see the knight sol the king's soldiers coming. He was busy digging in the onion patch. He was pulling out a fat and white onion, a worm claw crawled on it. Drake didn't mind the worm. He was the son of a farmer. His family had been growing onions in the kingdom of Breakin forever. He would spend his life digging up um, onions, whether he wanted to or not. Drake picked up the worm. Hello, little guy, he said. Then he put the worm back in the dirt. Are you Drake? A loud voice asked behind him. Drake jumped and turned around. One of the king's soldiers rode up on a black horse. He had a yellow beard. His shirt had a gold dragon suit on it, the symbol of the king rolling the bowl. Yes, I'm Drake, Drake said, his voice shaking. Soldiers never came to the fields, not unless a farmer was in trouble. The soldier rode up to Drake. He reached down and pulled him up to the horse. Hey, what are you doing? Drake yelled. The soldier didn't answer. Drake's mother ran out of their hut. Wait, where are you taking my boy? She yelled to King Roland, the soldier said. Drake's heart jumped a little. He had always wanted to meet the king, but he's only eight, his mother yelled. She marched up to the horse. The king had ch chosen him, the soldier said. Chosen me for what? Drake wondered. He knew better to ask the soldier questions. Peasants like Drake weren't allowed to speak unless spoken to. The king will take good care of him, the, the soldier said. Then he, then he spurred on the horse and sped off. Drake, do as the king said, says. And his mother called out. Drake had never been on a horse before. He held on tight. Drake's heart pumped fast as they raced through the village. They raced over the stone bridge. Finally, they stopped in front of King Roland's castle. The soldier helped Drake climb down from the horse. He opened the castle door and gave Drake a shove. The, they pressed past paintings and statues and people in fancy clothes. The soldiers stomped behind Drake as they walked through the halls. Drake wanted to give uh, wanted to look at everything, but the soldier gave him a push when he, whenever he slowed down. Then they came to, to some stairs. They walked down, down, down. The soldier stopped at a door. Where are we going? Drake finally asked. We're not going anywhere, the soldier said. Good luck. Then he, then he ran back up the stairs. Hey, what do you, what do you mean? Drake yelled. But he was all alone. Drake looked at the big stone door. He felt afraid, but more than that, he was curious. He he pushed it open and saw the face of a dry, giant red dragon. Drake blinked. He didn't believe his eyes. Then, whoosh! The dragon shot a huge fireball from his mouth. Wait, sorry about that. I need to push my in my chair a little bit. Okay. Chapter 2. The Dragon Stone. Drake do dove away from the door. The fireball just missed him. Vulcan, stand down! He heard someone yell. Drake stood up. A, a red-haired girl was standing in the doorway. No more fireballs, she yelled at the dragon. He had shiny red scales and a long, thick tail. Two big wings grew out of his back. Dragons aren't real, Drake thought, thought Drake. But Drake could see the dragon, and he had, the felt, he had felt the heat from the fireball. A tall man w walked past the girl. He had a long white beard. He he wore a pointy hat and a dark green robe. Welcome, Drake, the man said. I'm Griffith, the king's wizard. Did he said wizard? Drake had so many questions. Is that a dragon? He asked. He's not just a dragon, said the girl. He's my dragon. Vulcan is the best dragon in the kingdom. Drake, meet 
meet Rory. And Griffith said, Rory, please take Vulcan away. Tell the others I'll be there shortly. Others? Drake thought. The girls sighed. Fine, let's go, Vulcan. Th then the wizard led Drake down a dark hall. Why am I here, Drake asked. Griffith didn't answer. He, he stopped in front of the door. And Griffith pointed as a big brass lock. Sparks flew from his finger. The lock, to the lock opened. Drake's eyes grew wide. Wizard magic, he thought. He followed Griffith into a room piled high with strange things. He saw bot bottles with, filled with colorful waters and powders. Griffith picked up a wooden box. The box was car carved with pictures of dragons. This is why you're here, he said, opening this box. Drake pe peered inside. A, drake, a green stone as big as his head glittered in the light. This dragon stone told me you have a heart of a dragon, said the wizard. He tapped Drake's chest. It did? <coughs> Drake asked. His eyes got big. Yes, and those with the heart of dragon become dragon masters for King Roland. Griffith said. Drake heard stories about the magical dragon stone, but he had never believed they were real. Now questions came spilling out. How does the dragon stone I how does the stone know how I have a heart of a dragon? And how did you find me? And what's a dragon master? And and why does King Roland want dragon master? The stone is old and mysterious, Gabriel said. Even I don't know fully understand its magic. Uh, a dragon master is able to connect with dragons. As for the king, he is very fond of dragons, but he cannot co control them. So Vulcan isn't the only dragon, Drake asked. The Griffith grinned. No, he's not. He handed Drake a green stone on a gold chain. This piece of this this is a piece of the dragon stone. He said, I will help you connect with the dragon. Drake's heart jumped. My dragon? I get a dragon, he thought. He slipped into the st he slipped the stone into his pocket. Be careful, Drake, the wizard warned. Dragons are dangerous. And even the dragon stone can protect you from their powers. What powers? The Drake asked. The liv the wizard led him away without another word. Chapter three. More dragons. Drake's mind was spinning as he left the wizard's workshop. He followed Drake. He followed Griffith to a big underground room. There were no windows. Torches hung on the wall. Drake saw Rory and Vulcan. He also saw two more kids and two more dragons. Drake, this is Bo, Griffith said, pointing to a boy with black hair and, and his dragon, Shu. Bo, Bo was petting his dragon's tail. The This dragon had shot knee blue scales but no wings hi jake said nice to meet you drake the the boy said politely griffith led drake to over a girl with long black hair her dragon had white scales a yellow band of scales encircled the dragon's neck tip of fitz wings were yellow too this is anna and her dragon kepri griffith said drake nodded hi he said, we could use someone new around here, and he said with a grin. You you have met the other dragon masters and their dragons. It's time to meet your own dragon, Griffith said. Drake's heart pounded. My family will never be believe this, he thought. Just this morning, I was digging onions, and I've ridden a horse, I've met a wizard, and I've seen the dragon stone, and now I'm going to have my very own dragon? He... He and the other dragon masters followed Griffith down another dark hallway. Dragon, the dragons sleep in caves when when they're not training. Bo explained as they walked. Vulcan is the Vulcan's cave is the big, biggest. Ragged Rory. <coughs> <coughs> Griffith stopped in front of a small cave. Wood bars covered the cave. 
Drake, meet your dragon. Um, the wizard said. Chapter four. Worm. Drake peered inside the dra dark cave. A dragon sat inside. Well, this creature kind of looks like a dragon. Drake thought. The dragon had mm, brown scales that weren't shiny. He had two tiny wings. He had big green eyes and little ears. And he didn't even have legs. He looked like a big snake. But the only dragon that thing like thing about him is, is seemed to be his long snout. Drake stepped up to the wood bars. Hi, dragon. I'm Drake. The dragon didn't move. Put on the stone, Drake Griffith said. Griffith slipped the green stone around his neck. He felt a tingly feeling all over his body. Right away, the dragon lifted his head. He stared at Drake with his big green eyes. Drake felt a strange chill. Griffith stepped forward. You must name your dragon, he said. Rory piped up. Good luck naming him. He looks boring. How about Noodlehead, Anna? Asked with a giggle. Well, shook his head. No, this dragon needs a good name. Drake looked carefully at the dragon. He had long. He, he looked at his long brown body. Worm, he said. His name is Worm. That's a good name for an earth dragon, said Griffith. Opening the gate. Now, Drake, ask Worm to follow you. Okay, Drake said. Worm, please follow me. Worm called forward. Good, good work, said the wizard. Keep it up, Drake. Come on, Drake said, starting to walk down the hallway. And, wor and Worm crawled after him. He, he really is like a big, ugly worm. Mm -hmm. Rory said. Rory, be nice, said Anna. Drake didn't say anything. Worm was like a big worm. Where are we going, he asked. To the training room, Griffith replied. Yeah, said Rory. We'll see what you and your dragon are made of. Drake felt nervous. He touched his dragon stone. How am I supposed to train a dragon, he thought. What if I fail? What if I'm not a dragon master at all? Chapter 5. Do something. He... The training room was a one big open space. Shields and long poles hung from the walls. Buckets held water and sand. And at one end of the room, there was a round target. Straw stuffing poked out from the side. Griffith pointed at the target. Sparks flew from his finger, and a red bull's eye showed up on the target. Time for it's time for target practice, the wizard said. Me first, Rory. Rory called out. Vulcan, come. The dragon master, I mean, the red dragon stomped forward. Vulcan, fire! Rory, R the drag, Rory yelled. The dragon's eyes, orange eyes glowed. Then he, then two streams of fire shot from his nose. Then the streams twisted together. The fire hit the bullseye. Perfect, Rory cheered. Then the straw burst into flames. Drake jumped back. Good aim, said Bo. Bo, can you help put the fire out? Yes, said Bo. He, si he looked at his dragon. Shoo, he said simply. He didn't yell like Rory. Rory. Shoo swiftly across the room did did her feet even touch the ground wondered drake water please shoe bro said a stream of water sprayed out of the blue dragon's mouth the fire sizzled water droplets danced in the air lit up by the torches kepri rainbow time anna cried and kepri glided across i mean Gl uh, yeah, glided across the room. Drake thought her white scales looked like mm, jewels. A soft beam came of light, came out of Kepri's mouth. It grew wider and wider. Then it hit the water droplets and made the rain. It made a rainbow. Wow, Drake said. Isn't she amazing? Asked Bo. 
Anna smiled. Roy put, put her hands on her hips. Now, now let's see what Worm can do, she said. Drake felt nervous. He looked at Worm. Um, Worm, are you ready? Drake asked. Worm just stared back at him. I guess that means yes, thought Drake. Okay, Worm, fire. Drake jumped back in case fire came out of Worm's mouth. But Worm just lay there. Not all dragons can chew fire. And Drake nodded. Oh, right, okay. Worm, water. Drake, but Worm didn't chew water. Shoot water. Ha, Roy laughed. I knew it. Worm can do anything. Drake's cheek. Mm, grew hot with anger. He's just warming up, he said. Come on, Worm. Shoot light out of your mouth still. Nothing. You called that a dragon? Please, Worm, Drake whispered to his dragon. Do something. Worm just blinked. Don't worry, Drake. Mm, getting to know your dragon takes time, Griffith said. Target practice is over for today. Let's go eat. Bo grabbed Drake's elbow. I hope you're hungry, Drake. The Dragon Masters get, get as much food as we want, said Bo. Drake was feeling hu hungry, so this news made him feel a little bit better. But he had failed the training. How can I be a Dragon Master if my dragon won't do anything uh, as to it? I'm only an onion farmer. I don't belong here. Chapter 6, A New Friend There was so much food on the dining room table. Roast chicken, potatoes, carrots, bread, cheese. It was more food than Drake had seen in his life. Pass the potatoes, please, Drake said. Griffith pointed to the plate of potatoes. Sparks flew from his finger. As the plate floated over to, the, to Drake, he forgot all about wanting to go home. He stabbed the potato with his fork. Is every supper like this? Drake asked Bo. Bo nodded. Yes, and th there is always a great deal of good food. He asked. But sometimes I, mi I miss my mother's soup. Is your home kingdom far away? Drake asked. Very far, said Bo. I come from the east, ki east the kingdom of Emperor Song. And I come from the south, said Adidana. It's warm there, not cold and damp like it is here. Well, I'm proud to be from this kingdom, Rory said. My father is a blacksmith. He makes the best horseshoes in our village. Drake missed home. He, he turned to Griffith. Is there a way I can let my family know I'm okay? Drake asked. The wizard nodded. You may send them a note. He waved to one of the servants. Please bring this boy a paper and a quill. The, a servant gave Drake a paper and a small pot of ink and a feather. Drake's cheeks turned red. What? Rory asked. Have you never seen a paper before? And Drake looked down at his plate. I worked in the fields at home, he said, but I never went to school. I know how to read, but I never, but we never had uh, had paper or quills, so I don't know how to write. Roy started the same something, but Griffith gave her a hard look. Bo, Bo picked up the quill. I will write the note for you, he said. Thanks, Drake said. And then he told Bo what to write. Dear mother, I'm I'm so I'm safe, so please do not worry. Everything is new and exciting. The king is keeping me well fed. The n my new friend is Bo is helped me to write this letter. Love, Drake. Drake did not say anything about dragons. He thought that might scare his mother. The servant took the note away. Drake yawned. So where do we sleep? We have rooms in the tower. Bo said, "You'll be in my room." Drake smiled. Good. At least he had one new friend here. Suddenly, a soldier stomped into them. I'll rise for King Roland the Bold, he, uh, he said. So, chapter 7, A Strange Dream. The dragon masters jumped to their feet. The King Roland 
swept into the room. He was a big man with red hair and a bushy beard. He walked right up to Drake. Drake was so nervous he was shaking. Is this my, this is my new dragon master? He asked. Yes, your highness. Drake said Rufith. The king frowned. He's scrawny. Drake felt like sinking into the floor. The king turned to Griffith. Explain me to this, this to me, wizard. My strongest men cannot control dragons. Why why is it that these children can? It's the way of it is the way of the dragon stone, Griffith said. It's a mystery even to me. Hmm snorted the king. Very well then. I I, I shall leave my army into your hands. Army? Drake wondered. King Roland looked at Drake again. Do not let me down, boy, he said, and then he and the soldier left. Everyone sat back down. King, The king's words scared Drake. What will happen if I don't, if I do let him down? Drake wondered. He had a feeling it wouldn't be good. Bo took Drake to their room. There, there was a bed and a wooden chest for each of them. Drake there was a, also a desk for them to share. A jug of water sat on the table. That is your bed, Bo said, pointing. Drake climbed to his bed, into the bed. The moon sh shone through a, a small window. Drake, Drake looked over at Bo. He was already sleeping peacefully. Drake soon drifted to sleep too. All, all of a sudden, he was in a dark cave. The air in the cave felt warm. It smelled like the deep, rich dirt where the on onions grew. Green eyes glowed into the darkness. Where? One was in the cave, and behind him were other dragons. They all had the same brown scales and green eyes. Boom! A loud explosion. Mm shook the cave smoke filled in the, in the air worm let out a cry the dragon slithered at, across the cave looking for a way out drake woke up in his bed dripping sweat and that that was some nightmare he thought it felt so real chapter eight flying practice after breakfast the next morning drake went back underground with Griffith and the other Dragon Masters, what, why do we train all the way down here? Drake asked as they walked. Don't you know, Rory said. We're a secret. Nobody knows about the dragons out here. No one knows about the dragon stone is real. And no one knows about us. Drake looked at the wizard. It, it is true, Griffith said. The king does not want other to, the others to know about the dragons. Because he's building a dragon army, Drake asked. That, that is the king's business, not ours, he said. Griffith, said Griffith, he opened the door to, to the hallway of dragon caves. Collect your dragon. We are going outside today. Hooray, yelled Anna, Rory, and Bo. What if, but what if someone... Mm -mm, Someone see us if we go outside, asked Drake. No, we'll be hidden in the valley of the clouds, said Anna. Hurry, go get warm. Drake ran through the winding hallway to Worm's cave. Worm raised his head and looked at him. It reminded Drake of his nightmare. He shivered. Come on, Worm, we're going outside, Drake said. As he opened the gate, Worm crawled out of his cave. Griffith led them all down a dark tunnel. The tunnel opened up into a bright field of grass. Tall hills rose up on this, all the sides. The sun cheered Anna. She twirled around Drake and looked up at the sun and smiled. What, so, what, so what do we do out here? He asked. Anna grinned. We fly, she said. She patted Capri on the head. Show him, girl. And Capri raised her long neck and flew straight in up. He, she looped and swirled in the air. Jake watched her 
shutting his eyes from the sun. He had never seen anything like it. Wait till we see Vulcan fly, Rory said. Vulcan, circle. Vulcan flapped his big red wings. He flew up into the sky and circled the field. Wow, Drake, Drake asked. He looked over at Bone. Your dragon doesn't have wings, but but can she fly too? He she said. Bo nodded. She does not need wings. He said. Shoo, please fly. Shoo and floated up on the grass. It's like she's swimming through the air. Drake uh, Drake said. Yeah. Yes. Said Bo. How Shoo flies is very much like how one swims. She can ride the winds. Drake looked at Worm. His tiny wings did not look like he, they could lift him. What about you, Worm? He asked. Can you fly too? Worm just stared at Drake. He didn't flap his wings. He didn't even move. It's okay, Drake said. He thought of how scared Worm was and had been in the nightmare. We can watch the others. Drake sat on the grass. He put he put a hand on Worm's back. The, the dragon moved the little closer to him. Suddenly, the dragon stone felt warm on Drake's skull, skin. He looked down. It was glowing. Drake looked around. Griffith was standing over with the other dragon masters. None of their stones were glowing. Why is my stone glowing? He wondered. Am I doing something wrong? Drake quickly tucked his dragon stone inside his shirt. Then he went back to watching the other dragons fly across the sky. Chapter 9. Whispers. And that is how to shine a dragon skills, Griffith was saying later that week. Remember, brush skills one skill at a time. No shortcuts. Roy said, when can we go out again? Dick was glad Roy had asked. They had been stuck in the training room for three days. And Drake liked learning about dragons, but he was used to being outside all day, every day, on, on his farm back home. He was staring. He was starting to forget what the sun looked like. The wizard patted um a tall pile of books on his desk. There's so much for you for you to learn first. We'll go out again soon, Rory. And the soldier came. Men, he, he handed something to Griffith. The wizard smiled. Drake, it is a letter for you. Read it out loud, Anna said. Drake quickly nodded to Griffith. Dear Drake, we, we are glad that you are safe. We, we still don't know why the king brought you there. Brought you there. Can you tell us? Please keep writing and so we don't worry. And, you're, and thank you for your friend, Bo. For helping us, you to write to us. Love your mother. Your mother sounds nice, Bo said. Drake eyes started to burn. He held another, he held back his tears. Thanks, he said. May I send another letter about the dragons? You must not say anything about the dragons, Griffith said. The king's secrets must be kept. The wizard stood up. Now it's time to shine your dragons. Let's go. As they were leaving the training room, Rory ran over to Anna. She started whispering to her. Drake kept an eye on Rory and as they walked down towards the dragon's cave. She had a sneaky look on her face. He thought, what are, what are she and Anna up to? Chapter 10. Worm's Story Drake stepped inside Worm's dark cave. Worm opened one eye. I need to shine your scales. He he was carrying a brush, a basket, and towels. Drake looked, looked at Worm's brown scales. They're not shiny, he said, but I'll clean them anyway. Drake was still getting Drake was still getting used to be around Worm. The the dragon's head was as big as Drake. Worm could swallow Drake in one gulp if he wanted to. But something about Worm made Drake feel peaceful. Drake gently brushed one of the Worm's scales. The dr big dragon made a low sound in his throat. Worm smiled and closed his eyes. 
You like that? Drake asked. Worm, Worm made another purring sound. Good. Mm -mm. He cleaned worm scales one at a time. I kind of missed the onion fields back home, Drake said it to his dragon. It was hard work, but I loved being outside. Drake started to clean Worm's head. I really miss my family, Drake said. He scratched behind Worm's ears like he did with his cat back home. Then he felt his hand set and started tick tickling. He tried to take his hand off Worm, but he couldn't. It was stuck. Drake's eyes widened. He looked that one. The Drake was staring. I mean, the dragon was staring hard at him. Pictures popped into Drake's head. He saw the cave from his nightmare. He saw the explosion again. Before Drake had woken up, the pictures kept coming. One was trying to get out of the cave, but other dragons were in the way. Then, um. Then the soldiers rushed into the cave. Each shoulder had a gold dragon sewing on it. The king's soldiers, Drake asked. The soldiers wrapped Worm in chains. They they dragged him out of the cave. Owie! Drake could hear Worm's cry. And then he, then his hand stopped tick tingling. The pictures left his head. Drake looked at Worm. Did that really happen? Did the king's men just take you away, take you away from your family, just like they took out me away from mine? Worm nodded. I'm so sorry, Drake said. He threw his arms around Worm's neck. Worm closed his eyes. All his life, Drake had looked up to King Roland, but why would the king's men treat Worm like a prisoner? Wondered Drake. Maybe he's, he's in such a good king after all. Chapter 9. I mean, Chapter 11. A, a noise in the night. Good job cleaning worm scales, Drake. Drake said, walking to the, into the cave. Drake wasn't going to say anything yet about what, what worm had showed him to him. But he did have a question for Griffith. How did the dragons get here? He asked. The the king's soldiers searched far and wide, Griffith said. It's not easy to find a dragon. Most people have never seen one, but the kings did not give up. His soldiers were able to capture, capture these four. But did the dragons want to come here? Jake asked. The king does not want... The king does not always think about what dragons want, Griffith said darkly. Now, come. It's time for supper. After they ate, Bo, Bo and Drake went to their room. Bo was teaching him how to write the alphabet. Bo drew a capital D and a lowercase D. See, Bo said, the big D looks like a, a dragon with a big belly. He drew a paper, a picture on, on, on the paper, like Vulcan, Drake said with a laugh. Bo laughed too. Moonlight gl glinted off Bo's dragon stone, reminded him of Drake, um, something that Drake, he wanted to ask about. Does your dragon stone ever glow? Drake asked. Bo, Bo shook his head no. He said, why Why did you ask? It's just, I, I thought, I saw mine glow once. I, I, when I was with Worm. That's interesting, Bo said. You should tell Griffith. Drake said, tomorrow. He said, Drake broke rows of D's before he went to sleep. He thought uh, he thought he would dream of D's, or maybe Worm again. But just as, just after he climbed out of into bed, thunk! Drake heard a lo loud noise. He sat. Um, t he saw two f figures standing by Bo's bed. Chapter Twelve: A Sneaky Plan. Mm. The, the two figures turned around. It was Rory and Anna. What do you want? Drake asked. Go back to, do, go back to sleep. And Rory snapped. Why should I? He's, he snapped back. And Drake was tired of Rory being so bossy. Yeah, why should he? Boa said. And why are you two here? 
Anna spoke up. We are going to bring our dragons outside while the rest of the castle is asleep. You want? You guys want? Do you guys want to come? Mm, you can c bring worm and shoe. Mm, this is a bad idea, Bo said. No, it is. No, it's not. Rory said. We're taking. We're dragon masters. We should be able to take dragons out whenever we want to. You have a point, Drake agreed. And I do think Worm would like to go outside again. Bo looked worried. What if Griffiths finds out? He asked. And what if the kings finds out? They won't find out, Rory said. So long as neither of you say anything, she looked them in, in the eyes. What? Well, um, well, come on then, said Anna. Drake slipped on on his shoes. He followed the others down the hall. Drake, I mean, yeah, Drake slipped his, on his shoes. He followed the others down the hall. And the the door to Griffith's room was open. He was snoring loudly. Zzz. Rory put a finger to his lips. Shh. And as I tiptoed past the door, Drake Drake peeked inside. The long wizard's beard flew up every time he snored. The dragon masters walked down down the stairs. The guard put in front of the training room door was asleep too. That's Simon, Rory whispered. He always falls asleep. They tiptoed past Simon and into the training room. The, the torches were not lit, so the room was black. R Rory lit a candle. So the room was, I mean, then she passed candles to each of one of them. And now let's get the dragon, she, she said, still whispering. And they reached Vulcan's cave first. We opened the gate. Wake up, Vulcan, she said. We're going outside. Grumbling, Vulcan got to his feet. And Anna and Bo woke up their dragons. Drake went into Worm's gate. Worm, do you want to go outside? Worm lifted his head. His eyes shot wide open. They stared right at Drake. Drake got a strange feeling. Come on, Worm. But Worm didn't move. He just stared at Drake. Is he trying to tell me something? Drake wondered. Mm. Oh, Rory, Anna, and Bo walked up to Worm's cave with the dragons. Is Worm coming? Rory asked. Suddenly, Drake froze. He heard, the, he heard words into his head. Do not go into the tunnel. Chapter 13. Trouble in the tunnel. Did Worm just speak to me through, through his thoughts? Drake did not know what to think, but but he had a feeling those words of warning had come from Worm. Drake, what's the matter? And asked. I'm not. It's. I'm not sure. He said. What would they think if I told them? I I just heard words in my head. Worm doesn't want to go. Fine, stay here. Be a big chicken. Roy snapped. I didn't say I, I was staying. Drake shot back. I'll come. I'm um, come along without Worm. As soon as he said it, Worm called out of his cave. The cave. Look, he's coming with us. Anna said. Drake didn't hear and any more words in his head. Maybe Worm had changed his mind. R Rory led v Vulcan forward. Let's get moving. They headed into the long tunnel that led outside. The torches on the wall weren't lit, and the candles weren't doing much to light things up. Capri can light the way, Anna said. But but before she could give the command, Rory cried out, Look! Rory crowned his neck to, to look around the dragons in front of him. Then he saw it, a, a glowing red orb, floated towards them it grew bigger and bigger as it got closer that, that looks like mm, wizard's magic and i cried but that it but it's not it is not griffith's magic said bo it feels scary and just then Boken let out a ro loud roar his big tail 
thrashed back and forth. Calm down, Vulcan, Royale. But, but her dragon was very upset. Whack, whack, whack. Vulcan's tail banged against the sides of the tunnel. His big body slammed against the wall. Pepper and Chu cried out. They both tried to turn back. Only Worm stayed calm. The tunnel began to shake. Dirt fell out from the walls. The Dragon Masters looked at one another. Run, Drake yelled, but it was too late. The The walls caved in, in front of and around them. Chapter 14. Trapped. Drake's, Drake ducked as rain as dirt rained down his he closed his eyes tight uh, all then the shaking stopped drake opened his eyes all the candles had gone out he, he looked behind him in the darkness worm are you all right worm looked fine in fact he didn't have any dust on him everybody else was pretty dirty is everyone okay is everybody okay drake asked and it was on the ground. Bo helped her up. I'm fine, she said. That was scary, though. Roy walked over. I'm sorry, she said. I am i don't know why that, we, that weird ball of light made Vulcan freak out. Drake looked around. Thankfully, it's gone now. We should get back, Bo said nervously. Drake looked past Worm. The tunnel was blocked with rocks and dirt. I don't think we can, Drake said. The way outside is blocked too, Roy said. We're trapped, said Bo. He turned pale, and his dragon made a sad sound. It's okay, Capri. He, Anna said, stroking Capri's snout. Can you give us some light, please? Capri opened her mouth, and a beautiful white ball of light came out. The, the light hung in the air. Vulcan is strong, Roy said. He should be able to... Pa- to push through the rocks. Vulcan was calmer now that the red orb was gone. He he pushed at the rock wall, but the rocks didn't budge. Come on, Vulcan, Roy urged him, but Vulcan couldn't break through. Bo spoke up. I could have shoot blast through the rocks with water and a frown, but what if it doesn't work? Then the tunnel will be filled with water. Everybody was quiet. The new Anna was right. They were stuck. And Drake looked at Worm. Sorry, I got in- you into this. And then, then, gr- then Worm's green eyes started to glow, and a green light swept from the top of Worm's head until the end of his tails. Drake jumped back. Worm. He felt something warm on his chest. He looked down to see that his dragonstone was glowing too. And Anna, Rory, and Bo's mouth dropped open. They stared at Worm and Drake. Worm's green eyes, green glow filled the tunnel. Drake, it looks like your dragon is going to explode, Rory yelled. Chapter 15, Worm's surprise. Worm didn't explode. Instead, the dragon closed his eyes. Then the rocks blocking the tunnel began to shake. What what's happening? Bo yelled. Is Worm doing that? Asked Anna. I think, I think he's using the power of his mind. Drake said. He he wasn't sure how he knew. He just did. Rory and and uh, and Bo stepped the back. The rocks kept shaking, and then poof. The rocks broke into tiny pieces. Rock dust filled the air. Drake coughed. Waving the dust away with his hand. All of the fallen rocks were gone. The tunnel was clear again. Drake hugged Worm. You did it, Worm. We should get out of here before Vulcan sneezes from all this duffs, said Roy. The last time he sneezed, he turned my bread into toast. Roy's right, said Bo. Let's get out of here. Drake stepped through the pile of the rubble and found himself face to face with Griffith. Simon, the guard, stood behind him. You are all in big trouble, the wizard said. And and the whole castle is awake and, and King Roland is furious.
Chapter 16, just the beginning. The, the group walked back through the tunnel in silence. Six of the king's guard was waiting for them in the train room. One stepped forward as into the room. King Roland wants a report, he barked. The dragon master looked all to Griffith. He cleared it so. Please tell King Roland that everything is fine, he said. The dragons tried to escape. The dragon master stopped them. Mm. But Drake started to speak, but something about Griffith took, told him to stay quiet. The Griff soldier nodded to Griffith very well, he said. He, he, then the soldiers and Simon left. Drake turned to Griffith, but the dragons didn't do anything wrong. Roy stepped forward. Dra Drake's is Drake's right. This was my fault. I wanted to take the dragons outside, she said. She she turned to to the dragon masters. I'm sorry, it was a bad idea. Agreed, said Griffith. Now tell me, how did you all get out of the collapsed tunnel? Wem saved us, Rory cried. And Anna nodded. He, he glowed all green. It was amazing. And then he turned the rocks into dust, Bo added. The wizard's eyes lit up. That is excellent. He grabbed a drake by the soldiers. I knew, I knew we can bring him out of him, Drake. Earth, Earth dragons have great power. Griffith said, "Worm has been hiding his power until now. He glowed because he was using it." Is that why my dragon sword glowed too? No, the drag, the sword glows. When you have a strong link with your dragon, the link is strong when you and your dragon can read your shadow's thoughts. It will happen to the dragon masters too, in time. And Drake remembered the words he had heard in his head. Thank you, Worm, he said, stroking him. You really saved us today. Wait, we forgot to tell you about the red ball of light, Rory piped up. That's what scaled, scared Vulcan when it flew into the tunnel. He panicked and, and made the tunnel collapse. A cloud came over Griffith's face. Are you sure you saw a red ball of light? All, all four of the dragon masters nodded. This is serious, Griffith said. Danger may be heading our way. Danger, Bo asked. Griffith patted Bo's head. For now, we are safe. Let's, let's get some sleep. As Drake led back, I mean, yeah, to escape, he felt a strong connection with his dragon. He wasn't going back to the onion fields. This was his life now, a, f a life full of dragons and magic and danger. Those are dragon masters. And that is the end. So please subscribe because I bought this book for $10 and you guys can just look on YouTube bit uh, on my channel for free. So please subscribe. And, and the credit to this is... Mm. Tracy West and Matt and Graham Howells. Bye. See you next time.